Live from New York, it's the show that needs a big game from Zion tonight. Well, uh, yeah. One third of it does, exactly. this guy. I'm saying for the NBA, the health of the really? league. Oh, my yes. gosh. And Zion. I totally disagree. That It'd be nice. Head. It'd be yeah. nice. It'd be cute. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. more than cute. It's right. first things it's first. Today, cute. Lakers, really? Pelican. Uh, but now they're underdogs yeah. just by one point. Brew, are you surprised by this? I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> I can't start every I'm utterly like astounded. This. I do it all the time. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm shocked. Let, let's let's count the ways the Lakers should be the favorites. Yeah. Okay. They have the two best players on the floor. Yeah. Without yeah. question. LeBron mm-hmm. and AD. They beat New Orleans three out of four times they played this year by an average yeah. of 25 Easy. points. Yeah. Plus, they have way more playoff experience. It's not even close. LeBron himself has played 282 playoff games. The Pelicans in total, combined, all of them, 205 playoff games. The Lakers are hot, finishing 11 and 3. The Pelicans are not, finishing 4 and 5. And New Orleans is bad in the blender. You know what the blender is? I, I don't know. What Smoothie it. King Center. The blender. <laughs> you never heard that? No, I, I know it. Just act like I made it up. Okay. The blender. They're bad. They are the worst playoff te- or the worst team of all the top eight seeds in either conference. Hmm. 21 and 19, that's not good. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess they're saying AD, questionable, LeBron, probable. No, well, maybe, or no. let me say one other thing they're saying. They're saying that the Lakers might agree with some of my favorite media members and some of my least favorite media that's members, that. to be fair. Yeah. I won't say who's who. Well, I'll say Colin and J-Mac are on the favorite list. That, uh, yeah, the Lakers throw the game. The Lakers don't want to win this game. But you know who I know? Doesn't think the Lakers should avoid Denver? LeBron James. Right. You know who I know? I shouldn't say say I know this part, but I have real reason to believe, agrees with me that playing them now is better than playing them in a month? LeBron James. And you know who is, to add to Bruce's point, they're even hotter than the overall record suggests because – they're 9-1 and one in their last 10 where LeBron and so AD healthy. both play. Right. You throw out the game that AD played but went out immediately when he got hit in the face. They, LeBron is playing some of the best basketball of his season yeah. as of late. And while Wild, Wild said something yesterday, I was like, is that right? When you said he's shooting 30% for the month from three. Mm. But then I realized that we're in the very beginnings of April. If we extend that month to and the last game of March, that 30% jumps up to 47%. No. So uh, oh, really? well, yeah, that's the, the game. The 9 of 10 yeah. game, exactly. <laughs> no, but on the season, on the season, he's 41%. I don't think he's all but of But I sudden, think the smart thing it, is he hadn't been shooting a ton of Correct. Things. And he's not in the he's midst decreased. of some slump. It's quite, it's quite different. And he owns this team. Yeah. There are certain teams that just, no matter how old LeBron gets, if he's healthy... He can put his head down and get to the rim. And the Pelicans are one of those teams. This year against New Orleans, he's a 55-60-90 guy and does everything he wants, scoring and distributing. And then there's one other piece to it, which I think lends itself somewhat to our next conversation, but I think is more relevant to this one right here, which is LeBron has, in my opinion, always taken note of things that matter to the NBA. Whether it's the end season tournament, right? Whether mm-hmm. it is the you know his his importance there, and also except for the All Star game. The, okay, well, no, well the All Star <laughs> game. I, the, I'm just, I'm just I, playing. And I think once upon a time, oh, when everyone took it seriously, day, yeah, he, he took it quite seriously. Yeah, but yeah. the point being, he also has taken note on anyone the NBA tries to position as his rival or heir apparent. Yeah. And you saw in the 2016 finals when he had the moment with Steph and did the shoulder shrug, like, get out of here, because he was being positioned as a rival. Yeah. Zion yeah, was, pos- yeah, that is fair, but I'm saying it, I think he t- takes it personally, mm-hmm. whether it's fair or not. Zion was positioned as not necessarily the next LeBron, but something along those lines. A fa- future and LeBron, face of the league. Right, future yeah. face of the league. And LeBron has taken that seriously. So for all of those things, all those reasons, I don't think they should be underdogs. I know they're on the road, but the, the Lakers have not been a terrible road team since they made the starting lineup change, which is when their season turned around. And they just played a game almost as important on Sunday, and it was never close. Yeah. 
Right, so um, if, if this does turn in the Pelicans' way, and I don't want to give too much credence to the throw the game uh, theory, you know, Steph has to go all out. It's win or go home. Right. If the Pelicans have a nice lead in the fourth quarter, do you think LeBron will be like, you know what? Maybe this isn't the worst thing. We'll live to fight another day. Or do you think he leaves it all on the floor? I think it probably depends on how big the lead is and how much time is left. There will come a point where if they're down huge, it's so, like, let's just sooner rest. than usual. But though, now, well, because the thing is, nowadays with the three point shot, I mean, you see swings all the time. Also, and especially if LeBron gets hot from three, where he can be streaky. So I, um, I think they would go for well, it they, within they, reason. That was the exact situation, if you remember. They were. We had this exact conversation one year ago hmm. when they were in the seven eight. LeBron was dealing with the foot injury. Yeah. And we and we, I remember us discussing the worst case scenario for the Lakers, worse than being blown out by Minnesota, would have been a tight loss or where they he plays a yeah, ton of minutes. Overtime, and if you yeah. remember in the, yeah remember that yeah. game, they were down double figures in the fourth quarter. They yeah. end up he hits, I think it was Schroeder, someone in the corner, maybe not Schroeder, someone in the corner for a three. Might have been Schroeder. Uh, and then AD fouls Conley, mm-hmm. and it does go to overtime, and the Lakers end up winning. But they were down big in that game against yep. Minnesota, Played, went all out for it to get the extra rest. So to answer your question, even if there is validity to that idea, last year tells us that's not what they would do, that okay. they are going to treat this yeah, game as an elimination. All right, uh, let's dig in on LeBron versus Zion. Not impossible stuff. I mean, yeah, 12 points. Uh, <laughs> head to head this season, LeBron's got him in everything, basically, except field goal. Oh, no. Yeah, Zion's got field goal percentage, but he's taking everything at the rim. Uh, all right, so who's under more pressure tonight, Bron or Zion? LeBron, without question. Hmm. And here's why because he hadn't done it purposely. But Zion, because of the injuries, somewhat maybe because of his own lifestyle as far as eating and things like that, not being in the best shape. But he has done a great job, I kind of say that facetiously, of lowering the expectations for him now. Like, I was dead serious yesterday. That's where I was at. When I said, no, he played 70 games. That's great. That's all I'm expecting at this point. My goodness gracious. All right, now, if they win the night or get to the playoffs, then we can start building up the expectations again for Zion. But let's be honest. We've moved on. All right, he's no longer the new hotness. That's right. All right, we moved on to Wimby, to Chet Holmgren, to Ant-Man Edwards. Paolo. Paolo. I mean, we've moved on. Like, he's not the guy where even Ja, obviously, if he, you know, assuming he comes back fine, SGA. SGA so, without question. Yeah, we've, we've moved on as far as the young guys that are going to be the face of the league. Zion is a very good player. Very good. But I- he is also a very limited player. And the reason LeBron, even at this age, can give him problems defensively is because you know Zion going to the hole. Yep. <laughs> That's it. He's certainly not shooting a three. He's not even shooting a mid-range jump shot. He is going to the bucket, and LeBron's got the size yep. to just kind of stay in front of him. And then when he gets to the rim, you got AD there. So the Lakers pack the paint against them and give him problems. So I, look, I was happy correct. this year. I'm not even trying to diss him. I was happy this year. He is a nice playmaker. He handles the ball well. Yeah. They got him at the point a lot of the time. So he's got some, some strengths. He needs to be a better rebounder, and he's got to continue to work on his jump shot. Go, go ahead. That Wallace. was all 100% correct, unfortunately. I just have the opposite view of it. Okay, well, go. Where it's just disappointing that the, expect, that the media has overcorrected so much that maybe people were too harsh on him and there was some mean-spiritedness to the criticism. And now we've taken it the whole other way, where it's like, congratulations, you played <laughs> 70 games. But I think it's – That's it. But that don't you think that's legitimate? But I think it's, I think it's 100%. Okay. I just think it's unfortunate, and I, I have to kind of be the bad guy, I guess, by saying, hey, Zion, it's your moment now. You're up against LeBron James, another number one pick. You're up against AD, who the Pelicans had to start fresh, and you were the beginning of that fresh start – why don't you have more than 13 well, shots I, last game when AD wasn't even on the floor most mm-hmm. of the time when you're taking these shots? It, it was. It's frustrating that the expectations are so low for him. Oh, so here's uh, – maybe I'm splitting the difference here a bit. It, obviously, he needs to play better than he did on Sunday. Sunday he played a very poor he game. He played – I think the low point 
of his season and maybe the low point of his career non-injury related was the in-season tournament game yeah. earlier this year against the Lakers when he looked out of shape right. out of it since that but moment intensity the, wise too did you see like no, in the in both in, in both. both those instances yes. but the point I was going to make is the two games in between and the breadth and width of the season in between those two games he played really well he played well in both of the other two games even mm -hmm. though two the Pel really good games right and the like Pelicans that. won one and lost yeah. one and he I, I don't have a ballot, but I, t I do the exercise every year of what my All-NBA teams would be. And 13 of the 15 All-NBA spots were pretty obvious who the names were going to be. We, we yep. can argue about second, third team. Right. And then <coughs> the final one or two All-NBA spots, there were eight guys to me that I, I strongly considered. And I texted Brew to see if he and I were in the same boat. Seems like maybe I was a little higher than you on Zion. But he was... He's going to get all NBA third team votes. I don't think he's going to make the team. I bet he shows up on some ballots. A few point, votes. point being, he had a it's he had a good season by any realm of expectation. It's not just like, oh, okay, he just played 70 games. Right. He was the best player yeah. on a team that had 50, you know, was in the 50 At win vicinity, point, yeah. was on a 50 win yeah. pace, and he stayed healthy and played well and was a legitimate, in my, I know he didn't make the all-star team, but played over the, if you named an all-star team today, I think he would make it. And so for the, if it was based on the full season. And so I think he played it really well this year, but the answer is it's always LeBron. LeBron is always under more pressure. That because he is judged by such different standards and he's chasing a ghost. And so because of that, the answer will, no matter who you're playing, there is more pressure on LeBron well, James. And not to get too much on a tangent, yeah. when they face Denver, more pressure on Jokic. I disagree. I How? disagree. Because if Jokic loses, it is a huge yeah. disappointment and failure. Okay. If LeBron, LeBron's, they're expected to lose the Lakers. The, well, so you know, we can maybe I, have I, that argument I another day. Him, I just think that the that in basically every scenario he's in, he's under the most pressure. But certainly tonight, because even though they're not the underdog or they're not the favorite, people think they're absolutely. The, I think the favorite. public thinks they're yeah, the favorite. I think so. I yeah. think Zion thinks they're the favorite. But tomorrow the game is not tomorrow. He said that yesterday. Just yeah. want to make sure he knows when the game is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brew are the Warriors on upset alert. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to win, but they could lose. These are really two evenly matched teams. This year, they were two and two against each other. We know about last year's game seven or seven game series. So it's going to be a good battle. Look, Sacramento, I think a big problem for them is the injuries. Malik Monk, Kevin Herter. If those two were healthy, you know, people might, they might be the favorites. But with those two out, I think Golden State, we know they've been in these moments, <laughs> that's to say the least. So I think the Warriors win, but sure, they got to take yeah. this seriously because it's one and done. And the last three games between these teams were one-point affairs. Yeah. The Warriors won by one, and then the Kings won back-to-back -back games by one. That, that series, like you guys just mentioned last year, the key game of the series, Harrison Barnes had a shot, if you remember, to go up 3-1. Yeah. He missed it, and then it ends up being a game seven, and it takes the greatest playoff game, arguably, of yeah. Steph's life in order for them to end up. Now, they did win by 20, but it right. was – was close until Steph really lit fire at the end. I think Sacramento wins. Wow. I think that I think Sacramento wins. I think that there is a lot of respect right now, Vegas odds makers understandably, to the history of the Warriors. But I was really bothered, if that's the right word, probably not, uh, by how the Warriors finished the last week of the year when they could have avoided this situation. We you and I like they are they are a smart team with smart players. They can project confidence, but they know what we know that we were discussing all year, mostly about the Lakers. The difference between being in the 9-10 part of the bracket and the 7-8 part of the bracket and what that affords to you as far as margin of error and ability to actually go on a postseason run. We have never seen a team come out of the 9-10 to go on a real run in the postseason. We've only seen one team ever in the West, at least, come out of the 9-10 to even make the postseason. That was the Grizzlies when they beat the Warriors mm. a few years Small ago. Small sample size. No, of course. It, right, but I... The, I think that streak continues, by the way, and so I don't think wow. the I don't think the Warriors win tonight. You don't believe in Steph, Brew, because to me, both of these games just go back to Pelicans Lakers, 
It's the difference between you've got stars and the Lakers have a superstar, and the Kings have stars, and the and Warriors have a, have a superstar, and when it's superstar time, the superstars show up and drop 50 and send you home. I believe in Steph, obviously, but I'm, and even you talk about the way they ended the, the week when they lost yeah. that game that was critical. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen in a one game in the NBA. Yeah. I don't care who your superstar is. That's why they play seven game series so that they generally but get if the you, best. If you team. treat this like a game seven, you think Steph is I think I think when you're a shooter, even the best we've ever seen, wow. right? You can be off. You can't. That, that's how Steph can go. And their team go. with Clay and, yeah. and the rest of them, they can be off. I'm not so taking a shot at from Steph, a guarantee. but I mean Steph had a bad game in the biggest game of his life. Yeah, the, you know, which is a thing you don't typically see from an apex top ten all time guy in a huge spot. But if when it, that guy is a shooter, that's exactly what I was about to say. Because you can't like just LeBron put his head down and be like, right, you know go what, to I'm basket. just gonna. And I think there is also, I think De'Aaron Fox. I know I'm the only person outside of Sacramento that remembers the broken finger, but I think Fox feels yeah. like they let one go. And I know Sabonis remembers getting his chest stomped on. Probably. And so in That'll Sabonis, be right, to see how and he see responds. how he yeah. responds because Fox lit up the Warriors all year, 32 five and five. Sabonis averaged a triple double against them and there's real bad blood there yeah and so I think it's I like the Kings you yeah. obviously got me honestly honest. sometimes I have to really work for a take and try to yeah. find my corner because you guys have such good coaching analysis yeah. and sometimes Steph Curry just drops right here take Steph Wilds so I'm like we'll do oh. see you tomorrow <laughs> there's an e easy W for Wilds tomorrow okay. right. wow you guys are like wow you know what Wilds we should have <laughs> probably the generational top ten right. player of I all time. See him probably should have believed in him. Sorry about that. Looking ahead. If the Warriors lose, which we don't expect them, I don't expect them to, season's over. Here's a look at the numbers of a trio that has a bunch of championships and has defined a generation, 720 games, 719, well, also 72% winning percentage, uh, six most wins by a trio all time, oh, almost 14,000 minutes on the court. So, Nick, what's on the line? For the Warriors' big three, if it goes south, if they lose tonight, I think it's their last game together. I'm gonna re I'm gonna read you something, then I'll tell you who said it. Plan one or one A, get out of the tax. Yep. I'm not talking about just get yep. beneath the second apron. Get out of the tax entirely. He wants entirely. out entirely. That quote is from Joe Lacob a couple months ago, and in his defense, there's a real reason for it. He. It, for, I mean, they, oh, they were the most they, expensive team ever. This right. Year. But there's also so this year they paid one hundred and seventy seven yeah. million dollars in luxury tax and nobody watching cares or should care about luxury tax. But you should care if in order to avoid it, a team's not going to stay together. Mm -hmm. What he in his quote, he talks about the real penalties, not being able to once you're in the tax that many years in a row, what it restricts you from being able yeah. to do roster building wise. So if they want to get out of the tax. They can't bring back Clay Thompson unless he takes the Russell Westbrook Clippers deal. You know, they can get beneath the apron and bring him back, but if they want to get out of the tax, they need him to basically be playing on close to the minimum, which I don't see as being realistic. So because of that, I think tonight is the last night of what, and I want your take on this, Brew, is the fourth best dynasty ever. I give you my list right there. Russell Celtics, Jordan's Bulls, Cream and Magic's Lakers, Steph Clay and Draymond's Warriors, yeah. and Shaq and Kobe's Lakers. But what's so unique about it is this. The last game of Russell Celtics was a finals victory, and then he retired. The last game of Jordan's Bulls was a finals victory, and then he retired. The last game of Cream and Magic's Lakers were, was a finals loss going for a three-peat, and then Cream retired. The last game of Shaq and Kobe's Lakers was a finals loss, and then Shaq got traded. This would be really like out with a whimper. You know what I mean? For the last time they play together to be in a game that te won't even show up on basketball reference in the future because the play-in doesn't count. Right. You can't like, find I mean, it. You can't play find it. disappear. I mean, it's like, <laughs> what was the last game Steph and Clay played together? Nobody knows. There's no archive. And so I think it's the end of it tonight. I think it's the end of it. It's a good list. Um, it's hard to disagree with that list. Um, I'm not so sure now. Wow. If they lose, look. Chris Paul, will, now he, unless he comes back at the minimum, essentially, but they, his yeah. contract's not guaranteed. That's $30 million. Clay, it's going to depend on who else is looking at Clay because he's certainly going to get take a big pay cut. Mm -hmm. And does he want to stay with the Warriors at a lot less money? Is somebody else that's in contention? I don't see him just going somewhere just to make money. 
All right. Now, if it's a team in contention, Orlando's building. So maybe something Orlando's like better that than might. The Warriors. That, eh, I wouldn't go. No, I don't think so. I don't think they're better than the Warriors. He, and here's what. Remember, in the East, you're playing a much easier oh, schedule yes. than in the West. These Warriors, and I'm look, I keep saying it. Nobody keeps believing me. Fifth best record in the league since the All-Star break. I think they're looking at it like, okay, we've got – is you, No, what? he's saying he believes you. That's why he's picking Oh, you tonight. do believe – No, no but are okay. you picking them tonight? Yes. He oh, said I that you, I no, picked them. Said, I just said, he said it, they're he, on upset he, alert, but I'm yeah. picking them. Oh, yeah. I like it's going to be a tough yeah. game. I would oh, okay, be shocked still if they have lose. Them. I'm still sorry. Yeah. But, but I'm saying if they lose – I think they might look at – they got to chop. I would shop at Andrew Wiggins. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to trade him. He's got, what, three years left, I think, yeah, at about 30 a million here, close to that. Yeah. So, I don't know if you could trade, but I would shop him. I think the they're game. saying, look, Steph is at a top level. Mm -hmm. Draymond's still playing well. Clay came around and is playing well. If we can get him at the right price – and then the young guy, like for all we've mocked the trying to trying to grow these the old guys and the young guys, um, uh, um, their Kaminga's young guys are Kaminga's better, yeah. finally come around. And they're two but draft Zimsky, picks this year. But... Trace Jackson da Davis, yeah. like the young guys are playing well. They need to go out like I've been saying for probably two years. Get some size. It don't have to be great size. But they don't have money but, for any of this. But it doesn't have to be great size. I know. It wasn't great size when they had their dynasty. It was Andrew Bogut and Festus Azili. Yep. Get some size, though, and I think they might say, we can still make the, the run. Tonight. But you, you're right. I, they, I know financially that's going to be a big issue. Too. Dusty, where do we got Zach Eady going? Is he, lot he moved himself into the lottery? I think Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.